Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's Sabbath service. I want to start off by reading a scripture, and this is from the Book of Mormon. This is Jacob 37A RAV, which is Community of Christ edition of the Book of Mormon. 46A in the OPV, which would be the Salt Lake City Church, the Brighamites edition of the Book of Mormon. Wherefore, we search the prophets, and we have many revelations and the spirit of prophecy. As for announcements, we are still engaging in discussions on the temple. And later today, we'll be having our first meeting as a temple committee. So before that, we ask that you please pray for the temple committee, that we will know the Lord's will in all things and in, in putting these things together. And also, we, of course, need donations for that. So please, if you can afford to give, don't forget to give. We have a brother with a congregation in Tennessee that is small, and talking to him this week, it sounds like he wants to grow it. If you could please remember him and his congregation and his family in your prayers as they are working to move forward in Christ. And there's a number of people that are working to be ordained to the priesthood in the fellowship or just in non-denominational Mormonism. And one of the things that we're trying to do is find a balance. We don't want to be gatekeepers. We don't want to tell people who can or can't be ordained. At the same time, we need to make sure that as people are ordained, they aren't ordained and then just left wondering what they're supposed to do next. And so because of that, we ha are putting together absolutely free uh, self-study or you know, independent study or class, depending on how many people want to take the class or whether they want to do it independently or not, courses. But we need to make sure that what we're doing, again, doesn't become a barrier between them and, and God. As you know, that's how I was ordained by an angel, because there was a barrier there. The Lord said, we want this person, this brother to be a high priest. And the church they belong to said, no, not until he's older. Not, not until we say so. So please pray for us as a fellowship that we will be able to find balance as we're trying to figure out how to help people receive the ordination in a way that is appropriate and and not and not gatekeeping basically i have not had any calls of anybody who was sick oh actually i'm sorry that's not true there is a brother that's sick of covid um so please pray for him and his family he's i guess in quarantine right now and I, what I was going to say is I know that there are also others out there that are still suffering from COVID and other illnesses. There's another sister who was suffering. I can't believe I, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, doing this a little early this morning. There's another sister that went to the doctor. She was afraid she had COVID. It turned out to be something else. Please keep her and her family in your prayers. But I was, as I was going to say, though, there, there are people out there that are sick, so let's please pray for them. And I do feel impressed by the Spirit to once again ask you to pray for the seekers. That's something we should be praying every praying on every week. There are people who are reaching out a lot more recently, wanting to step out of the shadows of just watching the fellowship and actually become a member. And there are people who are investigating and trying to learn more about what we're about. So please keep these people in your prayers. And let's remember not only to mourn with those that mourn, those that are sick, those that are afflicted, those that are going through hardships, but let's also pray and thanks for those that have found employment, those that have, have found joy in, in their posterity, and the various blessings that the Lord has given them. So when we pray, we need to always remember to, to, to pray for the, the things that people need as moved by the Spirit, also for the, the blessings the Lord has given us as moved by the Spirit. So with that, if you'd like to pause the video for a, an opening hymn and a prayer, please do so now. And after the unity portion of our service, I am going to offer the Shema, which is Deuteronomy 6.4, first in Hebrew and then in English. And then I will allow space for us all to read it back together as one. Shema Yisrael, Yeva Elohenu, Yeva Echad. Hero Israel, Yeva is our Elohim, Yeva is unity.
I'm sharing this right now because it's been my experience that most people watch the message and then they leave about the time that we move into the communion portion. So I'm asking you not to do that this time. I'm going to be shortening the message down so that it's not as long. I, I think that um, some of the things I said are probably not as relevant to what the Lord wants you to hear and pray on this week. But I do feel that what was said in that message is what the Lord wants us to discuss this week. So with that, I'm going to transition over to the shortened version of the message that I shared a few moments ago. And again, I ask that when that message is over, please pray with me. And during the closing prayer, please listen to the words that the Lord gave me to say during the closing prayer. There's a lot going on with the fellowship right now. And so when I woke up this morning and I was praying on what I've been praying all week on what to talk about as far as this message and nothing had really come to mind. I've, I've been really focusing heavily on getting the editing done for the five books of Moses from the plates of brass. We're hoping to publish that very soon. And the one thing that concerns me, the one thing that's been on my mind has been the fact that there's just so much data out there, so much information. And when you look at the fellowship website, if you go to the scriptures page, just here alone, we have the Bible. We have the Everlasting Gospel, which is the Book of Avar and the Book of Mormon. So the coming forth of the Book of Mormon and the Book of Mormon itself. We have Doctrines of the Saints, which is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of revelations from the Latter-day Saint movement and lectures on faith. We have the Book of the Law of the Lord. We have the Book of Enoch. We have the Book of Remembrance. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I received the revelation in May which is adding several chapters to that book. And I, the Lord has told me I'll be receiving another revelation this month with the rest of the book. So that's even more writings, more works. Then we have the Plates of Brass, which isn't fully translated, but I've translated the first five books of Moses, or the five books of Moses, I should say, and the Book of Zenith, and a few chapters in the Book of Melchizedek. Then we have the Revelations of Hava Pratt, which has two different translations from a different set of gold plates. Uh, I call them the Plates of Moroni, the Book of Moroni. <clears throat> so this is a lot. And on top of that, there are so many other. If you go to openscriptures.net, there are so many other potential scriptures out there, which is why in these services, I try to focus on the Bible and the Book of Mormon, because the Bible and the Book of Mormon are the two works that all Latter-day Saints have in common, and this is a non-denominational worship service. Every now and then I may reach out and something from the Revelations and Doctrines of the Saints, or I may reach out into the Book of the Law of the Lord, but for the most part, I try to rein it into those two books. And what I, I really want to talk about today with this message is, I feel like, I've talked to Christians who feel like the Bible alone is overwhelming. You have this massive Old Testament, and then, you know, it's mostly epistles when it comes to, like, the layers of books. In the New Testament, the four Gospels, the, the one book of Acts, and the one book of the Revelation of John. So it's not as bad. But then all of a sudden, we as Latter-day Saints want to throw on there the Book of Mormon. It's like, oh, man, you know, I'm struggling with the Bible. Now you give me this Book of Mormon? This is a lot. And you're like, well, now you've got the Book of Mormon here. Here's this Doctrine of Covenants or Doctrine of the Saints, depending on which sect you're talking to. And now it's just, you know, all these other books that are coming to light, which is was prophecy in the last days. And so when I was searching through the scriptures and prayerfully trying to figure out what to talk about, just the Spirit spoke to me as soon as I got to the scripture in the book of Jacob. We searched the prophets, and we have many revelations and the spirit of prophecy. I think that this is important in, in our movement where we are now. With all these different plates coming forth, all these different records that are being translated and revealed. 
it, it, is, it does get confusing. And, and I'll tell you point blank, and I know there's some people in the fellowship that love the, I think it's called the sealed portion from uh, Nemelka, Christopher Nemelka. The man has admitted he's a fraud. He point blank said, and now openly admits that he wrote these books. At first he pretended like he stole them from the El Salt Lake City Church's archives. Then he claimed that he was given gold plates by Joseph Smith of Moroni in the Salt Lake City Temple. And then he finally admitted, no, I just made all of this up. And so I'm, I'm not trying to pick on this guy, but this is a witness that we, we do have things that, that are not legitimate. But does that mean we can't study them? Because there are saints in the fellowship that do study that particular book. In fact, he threatened to sue us because a group of members of the fellowship decided to meet once a week and they invited him to join them to talk about this book. And he, he yeah, not that he has a legal leg to stand on, but he threatened to sue, which is sadly hilarious. So what do we do when we have these false prophets? And, you know, if these people are reading the scripture, is that a bad thing? Should we forbid them from doing that? Well, you know, I mentioned gatekeeping earlier. You know, we're, we're not gatekeepers. We're facilitators. And so if somebody wants to read that book and if they do read it and they feel something is in there that really testifies to them of Christ, then by all means, read it. We just don't want to push this idea that it's scripture on everybody else. In the Fellowship of Christ, we have sustained a number of scriptures as canon for our movement. But the reality is that out of that list that I read, not all of them were voted on. There are many sections in Doctrine of Saints that we didn't vote on because we don't want these books to be a test for admission into this movement. So we don't ask you, as part of the questions, you know, do you believe the Bible is the Word of God? Do you believe the Book of Mormon is the Word of God? Do you believe that Dave is a prophet? We don't ask those questions. Our questions are all very personal about your relationship with God. So if you read something and you feel the Scripture, I want to make sure you know and you feel comfortable understanding that that, that for you is Scripture. And I also want to make sure you don't make someone else uncomfortable by trying to insist to everyone else that it is. And, and likewise, the same thing, if we voted something, Kenny, if you read the book of Enoch and you're like, this is dumb, I don't believe this at all, then then don't. This So what this verse says here is, we search the prophets. So the prophets, we, this, the scriptures are the writings of all of these different prophets, right? Um, every book of scripture, I think there's uh, one part in the Book of Mormon where the person that's writing says that you know, he's not a good man. And so I think, I think it's an omni, if I remember correctly that he's not a good man and, and he's not really worthy to ride on the plates, but he's just letting people know what's going on. But for the most part, anyone that's writing, and, and there's, I'm sure there's some scribes that are inspired when they're writing these the things that they're writing. But for the most part, even the epistles are written to try to help people grow in Christ, grow in grace, deepen their personal relationship with God. And so to me, that's what what scripture is it's anything that gets you closer to god it's so and these are the writings of the prophets because what's a prophet according to joseph smith and the book of revelation the prophet the, the gift of prophecy is the testimony of jesus christ so anyone that testifies of christ the prophet that's why some people say oh don't call the president of the Salt Lake city church uh, a prophet he's just an apostle well, no, he doesn't have the keys to the first presidency, and that's fine, like, like the original church has uh, had. But that's fine. He's still a prophet because he's bearing his testimony of Jesus Christ. They sustain all 15 of their apostles as prophets, seers, and revelators, regardless of which quorum they're in. And, and I sustain them, too, because what do they do? They get out there and they bear testimony. They bear witness that Jesus is the Christ. So this is, we have... Many revelations, you know, just, I've already touched upon that. We, we have so many scriptures out there. We have book upon book upon book upon book. And you're welcome to try to read all of them, but please don't feel like you have to. That's where the last part comes in, in, in this verse. And the spirit of prophecy. We have the spirit of prophecy ourselves. We have the gift of the Holy Ghost. So I strongly encourage you to 
Use this spiritual gift to figure out what it is that God wants you to study. What is it that the Lord wants you to hear? As an ecumenical movement, if someone comes to us and says, hey, you know, I, I'm from the, the Church of Elijah message. I'm shortening the name there. I, I, I fully believe in this book of scripture. The, the word of the law is revealed by an angel. And I'm doing this off the cuff, so I apologize if I didn't say that correctly. Wonderful. In fact, I would love for you to, to teach that. Tell us more about it. I would love to learn more about it. I've, I've read it, but it's not one of those books that is really, the Lord has said, you know, this is one you've got to study. It's not one that as a scripture committee, we felt impressed that we needed to try to canonize. I worry sometimes that we've canonized too much, but when we had a scripture committee, we prayed over all these things and, and prayer, prayerfully made the decisions to include the things that we have. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Whenever you read a scripture, what you want to ask yourself is, how does this help me love God more and love my neighbor more? If it's doing that, if it's teaching you that, then that's God speaking to you through the scriptures. If it's not, if it's just giving you some little update, you know, that's great. That's also God speaking to you. But if, if it's telling you to judge other people, to condemn other people, to not love your neighbors, then maybe God doesn't have a mission, message for you there yet. Maybe we're reading too much into it that isn't really there. So as we're studying the scriptures, please make sure that we're doing this with the spirit of prophecy and revelation. Please don't try to push any particular scripture on anybody else. The Lord has messages for us. And, and brothers and sisters, my, my dream, my goal, I, I want to see you write down your own scriptures, your own revelations from the Lord. Maybe they'll never be published. Maybe it's just something you'll share with your family. But we are a prophetic people. The greatest scripture in my mind are the words that God places on our own hearts. So as you're studying the scriptures, know that you're writing scriptures yourself. Where do you think the epistles came from? Revelation, studying the scriptures, inspiration, all of the above, a combination of those, something else. All scriptures are words testifying of the reality of God, helping you gain better insight and deepen your relationship with God. So as you're moving forward, please don't be overwhelmed by all these different books that just keep coming out of the woodworks. Please don't feel overwhelmed like you have to sustain all of them as scriptures. Pray on it. Discover what the Lord has for you. And if somebody else comes to you and they have a different set of books that they feel the Lord wants them to read, learn from them. That's the great thing about this fellowship. You don't have to study every single scripture because you can get a play-by-play -play from somebody else that the Lord told to study that scripture. You can gain revelation, wisdom, insight from, from these brothers and sisters. And in this, we can grow together in Christ. That, to me, is the beauty of having an ecumenical movement, of having the freedom to breathe spiritually, to connect to God on a personal level, and not have a set of gatekeepers telling you what you can and can't do, and what you can and can't read, and what you can and can't pray on or over. I want to leave you with a challenge. If you ever see us in the fellowship doing anything that you see as gatekeeping, call us out. Let us know. Every time I share my opinion, that's what it is. My opinion. Take it to God. Pray on it. Come back and tell us what the Lord says to you. There are some things where we have to draw the line. We can't let people hurt other people. We can't let people force their views or become gatekeepers themselves in our community. But beyond these 
small, I guess, regulations, we'll call them. We want to be as open and transparent as possible to help facilitate your growth and grace, to help facilitate your personal relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how well I know God if you don't know God. Yes, there are those that have the gift of testimony through the testimony of others. That doesn't mean that you can't grow your own testimony in your own special way. Together, let's as brothers and sisters in Christ lean upon the Lord. That's my message this Sabbath, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to partake of the Sacrament of Communion. I'm going to go ahead and play the recording of myself reading the Statement on Communion, and then Christina is going to offer the Sacrament Prayers. And then there'll be a spot where you can pause the video to partake of the sacrament, and we will proceed from there. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission to grow closer to Jesus Christ as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacrament, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us this week. and. Ask that you please like, share, subscribe. If this video has moved you in any way, if any of these videos have moved you in any way, please share them. That's really probably the biggest missionary work that we ask people to do is to like and share these videos. Subscribe to the channel. Pray for others. And let your light shine forth as you go about your father's business in your everyday life. We're now going to offer, I'm now going to offer a closing prayer. Elohim Shaddai, we bow our heads before thee at this time. And we thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for the opportunity we have to meet together as saints. The technology you bless us with so that we can have these meetings we're so far apart. We ask you that you put a special blessing on the seekers, on those that are either seeking and wanting to learn more about the fellowship, or those that are kind of hanging out in the background that are not coming forward for whatever reason. Please bless them. If they need to be staying in the shadows, if they're still healing, then please help them heal. If you have called them to step forward and help in this work, then please give them the courage and the conviction and the testimony that they need to step forward to assist in this work. Satan is working very hard. When people come forward and they know that the Lord has told them that they are to help in this, 
Satan immediately steps in and begins hurting them in various ways in, in their lives. And this is, unfortunately, it seems to be even more true with the sisters. Through the prophecy that you've given us from Christine through Christine, we know that you wish for the sisters to organize. We know that you wish them to step forward and be ordained, to take a part in this movement, to stand on equal footing with the brethren. In the Latter-day Saint movement, we see that Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon both attempted this, but that others stepped in and, and stopped it. And there are those that did continue to a certain extent, such as James Strang, who did ordain sisters to the Aaronic priesthood, the Levitical priesthood, I should say. As a part of the restoration of all things, we know that women are called to the high priesthood, to the priesthood of Magdalene. We know and we need sisters here. We know that we need sisters here. We need a prophetess to help us understand and reveal the feminine side to many of the revelations and things that we've been given in the Latter-day Saint movement. From Joseph Smith all the way to today. We see how men have taken prophetesses like Hava Pratt and cast them to the side. And how their families have burnt their, their prophecies, their writings, and their revelations. We as a movement wish to repent of this wickedness. We wish to move forward in faith. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we wish to help facilitate these sisters as they take their place, their rightful place, in the order of the ministry to help move this work, your work forward. I believe, Father that, and Mother, I believe, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, that the greatest thing hindering this movement it's very obviously us fighting amongst ourselves. But the second greatest thing, and it may be equal to it, is casting women to the side. Not allow them, not allowing them to fulfill their role in your movement. Calling them the things that men see as beneath them rather than seeing them as the equals that they are. Recognizing that symbolically they came from the rib of Adam because they're to walk beside us, not beneath us, not in front of us, but with us. Without sisters in leadership, without sisters in priesthood keys helping to guide this fellowship forward, we are severely diminished and handicapped. We are stuck at a point to where we are attempting to move forward. And I believe that not having sisters in the places we need them, holding priesthood keys, and sharing with us their prophecies and revelations and their understanding of things, is slowing us down. And I know this because When we had a full first presidency, when the Council of Elders asked me to seek a revelation, that revelation was not able to be received until the sisters brought back the Holy Day, the year of trees. We brought that back because of a revelation that was given to a sister, a prophetess of this restoration.
we need to get back to that point so that we can move forward in your name. So we ask thee, Father, to please bless those seeking, both the men and the women. Help them to find their roles, find their ministries, find the things that you are asking them to do so that we can move forward in faith, so that we can move forward with proper wisdom and understanding, with proper knowledge and wisdom so we can have understanding, so that we can move forward in righteousness, so that we can move forward as one in Christ, as a whole being, and not merely a brotherhood. We also ask that you please bless us with the people that we need so that we can put together the programs needed to teach our children in righteousness, to raise our children unto thee. So much has been done, and there's so much more to do. So we ask that you please bless us in our efforts, and please bless us with the people financial resources, and all the other things that we need to move this work forward in your name and in the name of your son, whose church this is, whose fellowship this is. And we say these things in his name, even Jesus Christ. So mote it be. Amen.